Two candidates vying to lead Arizona's largest city. Right now, 12 News presents the Phoenix Mayoral Debate. And welcome to our Phoenix Mayoral Debate. I'm Bram Resnick, 12 News politics reporter and moderator of Sunday Square Off. The issues confronting the next mayor of the country's fifth largest city are daunting. Water, public safety, mass transit, and a financial crunch that's lasted for years. We'll talk about those issues and much more with the two candidates for mayor. Let's meet them. Kate Gallego served on the Phoenix City Council from 2013 to 2018. Her top issues were transportation, the environment and a fair wage. She led the Prop 104 campaign that boosted the transit tax for light rail, buses and streets. Gallego formerly worked in planning and development for SRP. She holds an MBA degree. Daniel Valenzuela served as a Phoenix City Councilman from 2011 to 2018. His top issues on the council were jobs and education. Valenzuela helped expand youth coding classes. He is a City of Glendale firefighter and sits on several community boards. The special election is March 12th. Early ballots are already on their way to voters. Now let's welcome the candidates. Kate Gallego finished first in the four-person November election with 45% of the vote. Daniel Valenzuela was second at 26%. Under city law, they must face each other in a runoff. Now this will be a moderated conversation, no timed answers. The only rule, no filibusters, please. And full disclosure, as usual, as many viewers already know, my wife is a City of Phoenix employee. So candidates, let's get started. We start with you, Daniel Valenzuela. You underwent a kind of uh, political personality change between November and today. You had a group of Democratic advisors back then. Now you have a group of Republican advisors. You are endorsed by the Republican candidate who ran in November. Uh, you are surrounded by many big Republican donors, many of whom we see uh, with Doug Ducey. So what should that tell the 100,000 people who voted for you back in November about the person you are today? Well, Bram, first of all, the person I've, I've always been. I've always been a, a coalition builder and a problem solver. Before the November uh, election, if you remember, I was already endorsed by several Valley mayors, people like Jim Lane for, out of Scottsdale and Anna Tovar out of uh, Tolleson, a Republican and Democrat. Those things did not change. What that should tell voters is that people believe in my vision, Republicans, independents, and Democrats. Uh, the other thing I'll just say is every time we hear uh, of a candidate running for any office, we hear of the promise of the, and the willingness to work across the aisle. I shouldn't be penalized because I mean what I say and I do as uh, and I'm doing what I say. I have a track record in doing it. That's what it's going to take for us to move Phoenix forward. Uh, let's move on. You've said the number one issue is fully funding police and fire 500 more cops, 200 more firefighters. How much would those hires cost and how would you pay for it? Well, the city, uh, city budget this year, because we have been fighting for this for so long, we can actually sustain 300 police officers uh, this year if we were to, to continue to press on. This is something that we've been working on for a long time. We have 500 fewer cops today than 10 years ago. So, so the, look, excuse me, the ballpark cost for this is about $100 million. As I said in the open there, this city faces a persistent financial crunch. So where's all that money going to come from? It's coming from the general fund. Uh, and it's about prioritizing our general fund budget. We have tax dollars. We need to be responsible with those ta tax dollars. It starts with keeping people safe. Again, we have 500 fewer cops today than 10 years ago. So enough of the talk of making public safety the number one priority. It's a, this is about action. And I have been the candidate that has been about action. I helped lead the effort to lift the hiring freeze several years ago. Okay. We will press on as mayor. I want to give Kate Gallego a chance here. Uh, 200 more firefighters, 500 cops, ballpark $100 million. Can the city afford that? We can. The city of Phoenix went through strategic planning and unanimously everyone on the council, a very diverse group, said we need to invest more in public safety. That was something that I announced when I announced my campaign. We need to do additional hiring. We also need to be smarter. I've tried to propose and successfully pushed for a police assistance program, which frees up officers from administrative duties. 
This, these are individuals who are not in the public safety pension system, which is very expensive for us. The police assistants can do work like directing traffic or help with paperwork, and our highly trained officers can then be out in the community doing the work they signed up to do. I want to bring up something that Chief Jerry Williams said last spring to a community group after a, a man was stabbed to death in his home here in Central Phoenix. Uh, what her advice to all homeowners in Phoenix was to get an alarm and a doorbell camera to protect yourselves because she couldn't guarantee a cop would be there fast enough. What's that telling you? Is that the kind of message you expect to hear from the chief? We have benefited enormously in the city from community members helping us, our block watch groups, our neighborhood advisories help keep the city safer. But ultimately, the Phoenix Police Department needs to do better. The chief is working on a plan to do better and improve response times with support from council. I've also really pushed that we modernize our technology. I propose that the police department have a chief technology officer who can help with uh, implementing technology, we're going to be dealing with a huge amount of data. How can we do it efficiently? How can we make sure we don't miss it, repeat the mistakes of the past with our record management system? Uh, huge troubles as we rolled that I, out. I want to go to this, resp this response time question because that's pretty shocking. Get a camera and an alarm because we might not be able to be there. Bram, that is not a message anyone wants to hear. But to be fair, that's the p position that the uh, police chief is in. Again, when you have 500 fewer cops in Phoenix than we had 10 years ago, uh, think of response. In fact, for those who are watching, think of the last time you saw a police officer pulling someone over and writing a ticket. When was the last time you saw that as you were driving? When was the last time you saw a uh, police officer on a motorcycle? You know, we are in a position, Phoenix PD is, in a position to have to pull uh, tenured, very experienced detectives away from horrific crime cases to work a beat. So we have to get serious when it comes to becoming fully staffed and having the resources needed for the proper training. I'm proud that the city council just uh, adopted the city, the uh, body cam program, something that I really pushed for and started in Maryville. Okay, we're gonna end it right there. When we come back, paying for sports stadiums. How much is too much? And is this the end of the lines for light rail? Stay with us. And welcome back to our Phoenix mayoral debate with candidates Kate Gallego and Daniel Valenzuela. I want to just stick with public safety for a little bit longer. Uh, this has been one of the big issues in this campaign recently. The National Firefighters Union spending $400,000 or so on an attack ad against Kate Gallego uh, regarding a vote uh, she cast with the Phoenix City Council. Uh, the Arizona Police Union, an Arizona Police Union leader in the last few days came out, quote, begging from the bottom of our hearts not to vote for Kate Gallego. Uh, you're a firefighter, you're tied in with these public safety unions. Why should voters expect you to be a fair broker when it comes to these issues, given this huge support you're getting from these unions? Well, both candidates are getting huge support from unions and from other- Is Kate Gallego getting big support from public safety unions? Uh, no, but Kate Gallego is getting big support from other unions. Maybe we can talk about that. Okay, next. but this but, is a but, public uh, safety question. And, well, Bram, first, I, I got to let me, I want to say this very clearly. I am incredibly proud of the support that I am getting from our police officers and our firefighters. Uh, I, uh, that comes by way of, of showing leadership and action. I've dedicated my life to keeping people safe, both, both as a first responder and as a policymaker. So when we, I, all, we all know there's right. a price to pay as a politician. Uh, for donations, people want something. What do they want from you? The same thing any other Phoenician would expect of me, Bram, when elected. They want leadership. They want people who's going to do more than just talk about it. Someone who's going to continue like actions to lift the hiring freeze when it comes to hiring first responders. Uh, finally getting body cams uh, to a point where it's gonna be adopted citywide. Uh, and frankly, it's a different society in a different world. Our, our officers need the proper training to serve this diverse uh, uh, community. I want to go to Kate Gallego. Why are, is a police union begging not to elect you? Well, I have exciting news, breaking news uh, this morning. Okay. The Arizona Conference of Police and Sheriffs has endorsed my campaign. Their members include the Phoenix uh, Lieutenant and Sergeants. So 
when they endorsed, one of the things they cited was that this was a false attack. They agree with the Arizona Republic, which rated it as zero stars, totally misleading. You're talking about this ad about your vote. Right. The, there's half a million dollars of attack ads for me. The vote they cite is a vote on the property tax. I did not agree when the city council decided to make a significant increase in Phoenix property tax. At the time, I put out a statement saying that we should first look at the sports facilities fund and use money from tourism taxes, which can be used for any cause we want. Tourists benefit from a safer city. We could take money from the sports facility fund, avoid a significant property tax increase, and have public safety. What that means. Okay, meant, I want to stop you there. Isn't that illegal? No. Isn't, the, isn't that sports facilities fund supposed to be dedicated to facilities? I asked the city manager, and he produced a report saying that it is a sales tax and it can be used for whatever we want. So it is a fund that is currently backed up the bonds on Talking Stick Resort Arena. We are still paying for upgrades from 1990, but we are going to be about done with that. And we could use the money for something else once we're done if we had not chosen to take $150 million, put it in the... So the sports arena. facility fund to pay for cops. Right. Daniel Valenzuela. Again, this is the type of thing that gives government a bad name. You tax for one purpose and you use the funding for something totally different. Now, sports facilities, I hope we get to the arena. We're going to talk about that in a great. second if you can keep That's your great. answer tight, uh, okay. please, sir. Okay, so, you know, look, these are notes, May 17th, 2016. You probably have this in the city budget. It calculates a property tax increase and for the hiring of 145 police officers, 36 firefighters. Bram, look, it's very politician-y to say, I support all the great things in the budget. I don't want to support the funding behind the budget. What Kate is talking about and using the sports facilities fund, which is questionable as you just pointed out, or maybe your, your, your question is pointing out, uh, is that a one-year fix? We're talking about sustaining growth here. Okay. Uh, again, going back to an earlier question. Okay, I want to relitigate this whole ad. I know it's been a, a big deal. Uh, I do want to talk about arenas. So the Suns, let's put the Suns debate behind us because the Arizona Diamondbacks could leave Chase Field in three years on one of your watches. What are your principles? What would you do to keep the Diamondbacks here? Or would you be okay if they left and moved, say, up, up north to the reservation where they already have a spring training facility? I want Chase to field to stay thriving in the home of the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's a facility operated by the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, so they are the first line to be making a decision. The D-backs have spoken with, spoke with Mayor Greg Stanton about some kind of authority to run this whole downtown sports complex. So Phoenix has had a role in it, and the D-backs have looked to the city for help. And at the time, uh, I publicly stated that I would not support using additional city tax dollars. I believe that professional sports are among the most profitable enterprises out there, and they should pay for their own buildings. So that, that's, is that your line in the sand? No city tax dollars, period. I'm where, there to help with private financing. I will absolutely meet with anyone who might be willing to invest and say, downtown Phoenix is the place you want to be. We'd encourage you to invest. There have been some exciting deals in other community where they've done development around the facility that's helped pay for it. So the city's portion would be trying to grant entitlements and support that additional development to bring private sector dollars. Okay, and, and Danny Valenzuela, I have, a, I have a specific question for you. You support the Suns deal, correct? Uh, the, the city's deal. The this city's deal city with the Suns. Arena. It's a city-owned arena. This is not the Phoenix Suns arena. It's city-owned arena. Uh, listen, I, if, if this was a conversation about a new build arena or sports stadium, there is no separation here. We should not be building a new arena. That has never been the conversation at Phoenix City Hall. This is a city-owned arena. It has been since its inception. The Sports Facilities Fund, uh, which was created, is to pay for that arena, to keep it going. There's 182 million. I, I, do, I hate yep. to cut you off, but yep. I, want, I want to move it ahead to the D-backs. What not, would you well, support for the D-backs to keep them here? The, the D-backs, that is in a uh, county island that the Board of Supervisors needs to work through that deal. What I will tell you, Bram, is, yeah, listen, they didn't They're going to come to you for help. Well, well, you know they are. I, I agree, but, but this is, what, uh, this is the, the point here. The vision was not there, frankly, for the stadium the way it was with the arena. They don't have a sports facilities fund. That is, that's a mess, frankly, okay? What I will tell you is, at the very least, unlike Kate, 
I'm not a line in the sand. I'm not an all or nothing type of candidate because that's not how local government is. So all options? No, okay. no, absolutely not. What's not, not okay? Uh, well, Bram, I, first we have to have a conversation. I'm the candidate who's willing to actually sit down and have a conversation. If everyone agreed with Ms. Gallego on the city-owned arena, we would be losing out on $182 million economic impact annually, and we would have uh, visualize Med Veterans Memorial Coliseum in downtown Phoenix. Here's what's interesting. Christine Mackey, the city's economic development director, said, from an economic standpoint, the arena is negligible. You could probably make more money putting offices and retail there, couldn't you? No, absolutely, no, we can't. $182 million capital uh, 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 economic impact in that arena. Talk to the restaurant owners, talk to the, the, the bar owners, talk to the students who are uh, going to school downtown. Uh, and th again, you're talking about a repurposing an arena. What does that cost us? Especially if we're going to deplete that sports facilities okay. fund on something else. Got ended there. This discussion could take up an entire show. When we come back, is this the end of the line for light rail? Stay with us. And welcome back to our Phoenix mayoral debate with candidates Kate Gallego and Daniel Valenzuela. I do want to stay with sports arenas for a minute because it's a high interest topic for voters. I think you both know that. Uh, you, Daniel Valenzuela, you supported the deal with the Suns, the city's deal with the Suns. Arizona Republic columnist Bob Robb criticized a side deal the Suns made uh, to buy, basically buy a council vote from your former staffer, Vanya Guevara, who's now the District 5 councilwoman. Uh, she got $10 million out of the Suns and said much of it was going to be going to her district, Head Start programs, other programs in her district. Bob Robb says that is an inappropriate way to fund a, an arena renovation with these kinds of side deals that are apparently used to buy votes. What do you think of that side deal? Uh, well, I first thing I want to say is Ms. Guevara is uh, certainly qualified to, to answer uh, for herself. Uh, I, I submitted a letter to the Phoenix City Council asking them to do the right thing with these tourism and, and for sports facilities funds and to capture the, 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 ta the sales taxes coming out of that arena for police officers, streets, and homeless. But should the city be making, the council be making those kinds of side deals? As mayor, would you support those kinds of side deals to get any kind of arena stadium deal done? As I understand it, and uh, Mr. Rob was following along and he had his opinion on it, as I, as I understand it, part of that, uh, you know, part of that proposal was that the Phoenix Suns was going, they were going to invest in a community program. And so that's how it was. Dis Invest largely in that district, your district. Well, if you if you read it, Bram, it's a 10, it's $10 million. And obviously part of that is going to go to every district. In, in fact, part of. But, well, I guess, why is that even needed? Why is that? Why should that even be part of a deal? To, to I, again, I, I, I can't speak for Ms. Gavada, and, and I am not going to say that okay, that so was the reason she. As mayor, as mayor, would you approve that kind of deal? Would you, would well, you if, sign off on if, that? If you, you, let, if you let, me, let me explain as I understand it, then I'll let you know. So $10 million that was part of the proposal that they were going to invest in a community program. As I understand it, that community program uh, was highlighted for uh, education and homelessness. And so that's part of the proposal. And those types of conversations happen all the time, obviously in the open. Uh, then then if that's the way it goes, then yes, I would support that deal. In fact, there are hundreds of kids who are going to continue with their, okay. their after-school slots. Okay, a question answered. Let's move on to light rail. Kate Gallego, you were co-chair of the Prop 104 committee four years ago. You led the passage of the transit tax increase to pay for light rail expansion, other transit uh, needs. Uh, also, uh, police officers were thrown, thrown to that too. Uh, now you might have to fight for light rail again. There could be a referendum, a vote, citywide vote in uh, August on whether to keep this expansion going. Why are voters turned off by light rail? There is a group of business owners along the rail who are very worried about, first, the construction impacts and, and traffic flow. They have legitimate concerns that I understand, but as an elected official, it's my job to look globally at what it does for the overall community. 
South Phoenix has not always gotten its fair share of an investment. This is a very important project that would really create opportunities for people in the community that I represented. Uh, it goes through one of the city's two concentrations of public housing, individuals who in many cases are living without air conditioning. So they don't have a two-car garage filled with transportation options. And I believe that this project will give them opportunities for better schooling, access to jobs, and medical care. I was the top vote getter in the precincts along the light rail in this proposed extension, and I believe that demonstrates the support that the residents of this community have for light rail and will have in the election. You support continuing the extension, not just in South Phoenix, but around the valley? Uh, as of now, the answer is yes, and I think everyone should, because that's what was promised to the voters. Again, Prop 104 passed. Uh, as we speak, for those of us who live in Phoenix, which is probably most of your viewers, we are being taxed for that line. And, and I'm going to use the same example of that whole sports facility. Can I give you 15 seconds, please? When, when you are taxed for a purpose, you have to deliver. So that has to go through. Now, what we can do is get better and get out there and talk with people. All Leadership right. is what's needed there. All right. Got to end it there. Thank you both for a great conversation. But we are not done. A lot more to talk about. So we're going to keep the conversation going online. You can find the link on our YouTube page. That's 12news.com slash YouTube. Hope you stay with us. I'm Bram Resnick, and I don't care who you vote for, please just vote.